Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Fish Tech Live. This is uh, Season 3, Episode 6, and uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I hope it's, it's streaming okay. As you all know, this is live, so um, the good, the bad, and the ugly can, can happen. Uh, guys, we don't have a massively well-prepared uh, pre-shot videos for you like we've done recently or guests on being on boats with guests and whatnot. It's been a little bit of a crazy time. Uh, it was the prep uh, for uh, going to drink copies and mapping drink copies. We had enough problems there with engines and all sorts of things with the replacement motor. Um, but uh, we, we got the job done. It was a very, very exciting job. But you know what, before I get into the details, let me just make sure you guys can see, <clears throat> or I can see what you guys are seeing. Okay, I'm going to let that start in the background. Wait, hang on, let me just wait for it to, to start. Um, <clears throat> Okay, there we go. It seems to be working. Um, uh, good evening, uh, Rimvadias uh, Bereka. Uh, greetings from Lithuania. Good evening. How are you doing? Johan van Kopenhagen. Good evening, jo uh, uh, Johan. Uh, Colleen is there. Rowan is there. Uh, right, okay. We are rolling. Guys, um, the quality that you'll see on the live stream, I know I say it every single time, but um, it only streams at 7.20. Um, but... Uh, at the end of the show or during the evening, I will upload in high definition onto YouTube and make that video available. Guys, I'd just like to apologize for last month's show. I forgot to hit record on my live stream. So unfortunately, there wasn't an HD um, YouTube video for uh, Season 3, Episode 5. I apologize for that. Um, it, and it's such a pity because it was such a good one. What I'll do is I'll take some of those videos. Uh, the the separate videos from from that and put them um, up onto YouTube. Some of them are already there. We were talking about the the forward looking concept sonar in particular. We were trying the Garmin Live Sight, which gave us some fantastic results. It was very very exciting to actually see. So yeah, <clears throat> uh, Raynaud's join us. Uh, good evening, Raynaud. Uh, everything's all fine. Fantastic. Uh, JJ Turner, Jacques Kiss, Corneille Skuman, welcome, welcome Corneille, I hope Jacques also watching, fantastic. Guys, like I said, the show is about, um, we're going to be talking about two dams that are not HD charts, that is the Arabi, that is found on the Northern Provinces sediment chart, and the Woodstock chart, the Woodstock chart is found on the Midmar chart, on the Midmar HD, so we're going to just touch on that a little bit at the end of the show, um, but like I said, um, the main show tonight is going to be about Albert Falls. We've sold a lot of those charts recently in preparation for Nationals later this, this year. As you guys know, the venue was changed from Inanda Dam to Albert Falls. So hence, <clears throat> the guys are already sitting at home and studying the Albert Falls charts. And I take my hat off to those people. You know, John Kehoe said, uh, luck comes to everybody. Because so many people say, oh, look how lucky that guy is. When he's doing well, or he's caught lots of nice fish, and he's got his protein calories. Oh, look how lucky that guy is. Or he's over in the States doing extremely, extremely well, like Michael Matia. But let me tell you, Michael Matia and the likes of Michael Matia put in the work, believe you me. Um, they they used their fish tech charts. They used 360. They used whatever technology was available, and they and and they absolutely got the best out of it. So what I'm trying to say is, you guys get the charts, sit at home, and be prepared. Like John Keogh said, he said, luck comes to everybody. Uh, the definition of luck, however, is, um, what did he say? It's where opportunity meets preparation. An opportunity comes to every single one of us, but not all of us are prepared. So for those of you who hit the dam running and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and yay, we're here, we've done it, we've worked so hard to get you and then you don't know where to go. Hey, Neaman, shame. That's just sad. Please do your preparation, and now is the time to do the preparation. You hook your phone up to your massive big TV through a little slave unit, and you can plan your entire trip months and months in advance from the other side of the country. In fact, on the other side of the world. So, yeah, 
take the time make an effort do the preparation uh, let's see who else has joined Zain Abib hello Zain he's got our charts for sure uh, Rim De Beers joined hello Rim uh, James Parfit hello James Alton Arthur's joined hello Alton fantastic we we'd be doing well we got a a nice audience there there tonight guys let's have a look at this um <clears throat> let me you're gonna need to merge that in there um right there we go i hope that's coming up okay guys um you basically put your chart into the unit you're going to say yes 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 to all the various layers um but obviously if you are not uh, at the dam you're going to need to know where to go and this is why i always tell people the first thing you do don't go to all the separate uh, views that are on the chart go to navionics because you can see South Africa, zoom out, see South Africa, zoom your way in. You guys know where um, Albert Falls is. It's there just a little bit north of Peter Maritzburg. It's easy to find. Zoom in until you get the screen relatively full with that dodgy little squiggle there by Navionics. Thank you, Navionics. Wonderful job. Um, <clears throat> then pop in. Let's start with satellite. We want to see the satellite so we're going to have a look at satellite okay there we go okay guys as you know uh simon hayden hello simon how are you doing Vili becker's joined uh, brent humphreys has joined danny gason has joined hello danny hello everybody welcome welcome guys um as you see the satellites so let me leave this on uh satellite there we go we're looking at the satellite view there we go Sorry, my voice is a little bit funny tonight. I think I've got a little sniff coming on or something. But anyway, <clears throat> it's definitely cooled down somewhat. Um, guys, this is the lowest level uh, satellite imagery that I can get for Albert Falls. And it does give us some, some good information. Um, you can see the paddy fields very, very easily. If you go to your contour charts, You'll see how it corresponds with that. There they are there. It all works works great. Now, guys, these charts here, these contour charts. Obviously, the white areas, um, it's the dam is too low. So we can't actually use those areas just yet. So you you know, for this this tournament this year, the dams, I think it's sitting at, I hope Tom was was here. Um if Tom was here, he would have told us what the level is. I think it's around 50%, guys. I should have checked that before the show started. But I've got a feeling it's around 50%. I can't remember what he said. I think he said it's around about, it's down by 17 feet. We'll have to confirm that with uh, Tom. Tom. Tom Wills is our uh, local Albert Falls guy. He's on there just about every single day of his life. Um, so we'll confirm that with old Tom. Um, but I, I seem to remember it's down about 17 foot. So please keep in mind the contour charts that you see here. So let's say we zoom into this area here and it says that that's 35 feet deep there. You're going to have to tr subtract 17 from that 35. Unfortunately, um, the Lorenz chart plotter doesn't give you the option to correct for dam level, which would be a really, really nice tool, tool to have. Um, I must just warn guys with that tool that do have that tool not to forget that you've left it there. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Clifford Lemon Savile says the dam is at 50%. So fantastic. Um, uh, Clifford, do you know how many feet it's actually down from the full mark? I seem to remember Tom saying when it's 50%, it's around 17 feet down, but don't quote me on it. So um, anybody that's on the dam, just leave, drive out onto a section. Let's say where, let's have a look where there is a, a launch site here. If you drive out of the launch site, let's find one there. Drive out into the dam there. Get to a nice flat area like, like that. Don't go to an area where there's lots of channels because that's going to be difficult. Go to a nice flat area where you see the, the contours very far apart. Uh, 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 and look on your sonar, on your down looking sonar, and just see what, what the depth is. And you would do your little calculation from actual depth to what the, what the chart says. Because like I said, um, the, the charts are registered 
are, are calibrated for the dam being 100% full. Um, good evening, Clifton Bridge, uh, Jens uh, for Sharon, uh, Stephen David. Uh, hello, Stephen, how are you doing? Um, Clifford says no, unfortunately, he, he doesn't. We, we'll have to ask old Tom, maybe he pops in a little bit later. He'll know for sure. Um, but uh, guys, I think it's around about 17 uh, feet. So yeah, so so how are you going to go about this? Where are you going to start? First of all, um, we showed you the satellite, which is obviously a great place to, to start. Um, it's, it's quite a common chart. Uh, a lot of the guys, look, it reveals a lot of the secrets, a lot of in, information. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, if let, let's just take this area, for example. I'm going to zoom in here. You can see, hey, you don't need to be a brain surgeon to see that that is an interesting area. Um, this water level when the dam was this low, I think it was around 20 something percent, somewhere around there. That's when this satellite imagery was actually taken. It was very, very low. This is however underwater at the moment. If you go and look at a YouTube video that I did recently, I think it was three shows ago or four, um, I did a couple of videos with Martin de Kock and you'll see us cruising around this area and fishing this, this area here. Martin knows this area very, very well. But I want to show you something really fantastic, what you get extra. Because remember, you can give up fishing. <clears throat> um, there was a video that was released recently where someone said, if you want something done properly, go and do it yourself. You all know, give up fishing, sell the rods, and go and build charts by all means. But you know what? Look at this area here. Okay, now there's no contours. Um, the dam has come up a little bit. Could we add this data? Yes, we could. But do we need to? Look at this. Let's go to Aerial HD. Okay. If you compare Aerial HD to satellite, you see it's very similar. Okay. Very, very similar. But let's take that little hump there. I'm going to zoom right in. Now, I've seen charts that look great when they zoomed out. But when you zoom in, things get a little bit dodgy. So let's take that area there. We want to see as much detail as we can. And things just get plain old nasty once, once you do that. But if you go to your aerial HD, this is your drone footage. Can you see the difference between satellite imagery and the drone imagery? It is extremely, extremely clear. Look at these shapes here. Can you make out these shapes of an old building here? So and the other thing that we've got that we did, we took a couple of photographs here. This dam has got a lot of photographs. There you can see. Um, <clears throat> you can see this. I'm going to zoom in because remember these images, you can zoom in. Can you see all these bricks? It's rubble from an old building. You can see there's even a bed there on, on the left hand side. Um, I'm not talking about a sleeping bed, I'm talking about a fish bed. Um, a corner of an old um, foundation there, okay. Um, and guys, around the dam, let's have a look, there's another one there. What has that got? There we go. You see, there's all sorts of things here in the water. A lot of interesting stuff. Now this, there's, there you can see those foundations quite nicely. See, let's see if we've got another angle on it on 194. You just push, there we go. That's nice. Can you see that? Look at that detail there. Okay, so guys, please do not forget about these images. On this map, we've got, I've, I've lost count, but there must be about six, 800, somewhere around there. There are, you see all those lines around the corner there? Let's click on any one of those. Lots, there's plenty. There's plenty. Let's look at 103. Okay, that's that's a dud photo. <laughs> don't use that one. I don't know how that one snuck in there. But that's all before the drone took off on on the boat. Yeah, you 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 don't want to use that one. 104. You will see some of the no. Let's see. <clears throat> Um, who else has joined? Brian Gibbs, Monet Bonner, Brendan Von Zadam. Hello, Brendan. How are you doing? Heath Roger Mankies, he's joined. Hello, Heath. How are you doing? Okay, this was obviously, um, some of the images were taken from the water, from water level, and some were taken from the drone. What I tried to do with the drone with these images was, 
I sort of calculated where the full level would be, plus I added about eight feet, you know, the six foot of a human, of a person standing, plus the two foot freeboard on an average bass boat, and I put it up roughly at that level. So when the dam one day uh, gets 100% full, you, you should be able to see this, you know, it, it would be fantastic to have that type of imagery uh, from that that level. We call that eye level imagery. So there's, let me just see if we've got, yeah, oh, there we go. Okay, so don't forget about that. But the main thing that I wanted to emphasize about this area here, um, uh, uh, let me just see what Cornet said. A lot of familiar spots in Old Falls chart. Going to focus on spots which I can fish my strength. Prep work, research. Here. Fantastic, Cornet. Yeah, do as much prep as as you can. You, you you can never be too prepared. That's that's nonsense. You 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 just can't can't do that. Um, I just want to see what these. Okay, there's there's a good example of what these humps look like from an from an angle with with the drone. Um, as you can see, I mean, that's common sense. How, how can that not be a good spot to, to actually fish? I just want to point out here, if you put, let's say that one there, A253, and you tap on that. If you've got a XI5 trolling motor and you've got the gateway link, you can press the bottom left of the screen there. You can't see it. Can you see there? It says, there we go. It says go to, okay? It will ask you, do you want to engage the trolling motor? You say, yes, you, you do. And the trolling motor will take you to that exact location where that photograph was taken from. Obviously at a much higher altitude. These were very high altitude. This is probably about 150, 160 feet that these were taken. But it was to try and give you a perspective of, of what it looks like from that height. Like I said, it, it, it's about perspective. So, so yeah. Um, but there are lots. Now, there's something else for this area. Do not forget about this. The um, Ch um, Clan William chart, for example, is a brilliant, brilliant chart for the elevation view. Anybody who's got the Clan William Fishtech HD chart will tell you elevation view is the secret. So how do you apply the elevation view to Albert Falls? But hang on, let me first explain what this is. Let me go to elevation. We press elevation okay guys now remember if this happens to you it means your categories your chart categories your vector data is sitting on top of your imagery so you go to your chart options you go to your categories and you turn them off go and turn them off now this gobbledygook edge here that i've got the cursor on now this is your water edge. Can you see what happens to the water edge? This feature, this elevation view is quite fantastic. It's using the, the drone imagery is of such a high definition. I use a 4K video on there. The imagery that it actually creates a form of 3D light distance ranging and it can tell you what's closer and further away from the camera. So in this case here, you can get an idea of the red areas of what's your elevated view. And then as it gets to your cooler colors, it's going slightly further away. So a lot of guys uh, will go to this, go to their contours and go, <gasps> it's white. There's nothing there. I don't know what to do. Don't panic. Use your elevation view. Okay, it doesn't give you the actual depth, but take the closest to it so let's go contour and let's see what's the closest contour that we've got here um, <clears throat> we've got about 39 feet here on this edge here 39 take 20 away from that about 15 feet we need to find out from from Tom exactly how deep this this area is I must be honest with you if this area, because remember, fish, chart, fish tech charts are being updated all the time. They never stop. If this area is deep enough to get in there and go and scan, 
we will do that we will go in and scan this area and see if it's not too weeded or what have you um just to get contours in there so okay i'm going to make a note of that i need to find out from top is that deep enough to go in there and scan and uh, add these contours to this chart um but i will let let you guys know um closer to the time so so let's okay i've got a note of that it, it would be nice because it looks like it's going to be deep enough to actually record and it's strange that, that information is not there the way that it's in a pattern there it's as if this data is actually the shoreline i know is definitely not but just the pattern of this it's like some of this data is missing let me just do some homework and find out what has happened here so anyway okay so i've got some work to do on on on, on this area but um, by all means, go onto your elevation view. There we go. And use this. Even where it goes out a little bit deeper here, you can still see. You, can you see those little highlighted areas? Let's take it 197 there. You see, there we go. Okay, the, there's a little bit of, of brush. There's a bit of brush pile there. We know we put that there. Eh? And there's the tip of a little one behind there as well. There we go you can see that brush look that'll probably be long gone okay so don't expect that brush pile to to actually be there uh right let's see who's joining us class etzel has joined hello class gareth uh, davies hello hello gareth armand uh, malcolm hey uh, malcolm robbie's joined hello robbie michael cannon's joined hello michael uh albert falls for check charles i've seen clear don't know <laughs> uh no yeah, Michael, the cat's out the bag, boy. The cat's out the bag. The 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 eggs are buying this this chart left, right, and center. A couple of the Tanin eggs are are lagging, but we'll see how how that pans out. But anyway, um, yeah. So that's your your elevation view. Use it around other parts of the dam. You'll see it's only the elevation view is only available for areas that have been done with your aerial hd so if you go to your aerial hd you see how it matches up so if you go to this little area here i know this is underwater at, at the moment you've got this nice little pointer with a line there you go to your elevation view and you can clearly see you see this gobbledygook along the side here these dots and whatnot that's when the light distance ranging software gets confused and what confuses it water it hates water it's the water is obviously too reflective and it needs to hit terra firma something solid for it to work so just remember if you look at this view and you see all these dots and whatnot you must just know that it's the light distance ranging technology getting a little bit of a freak out but don't worry the stuff you need to know that's on the shore that information is there and it's good let's have a look there we go there you can see exactly what it looks like exactly what it looks like you can see there's the interesting side there there's the boring side there but you try both you see that's even got a little ledge on it. it's it got a sharp ledge on it let's see if you can see that on the actual chart yes you can can you see how that has got more of a sharper um, shadow compared to that side look for those type of things those type of things are very very valuable so um let's have a look how does that look you can obviously see that with your with with your satellite okay that information is there but i can tell you guys the 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 satellite imagery is only going to get you so far it's going to get you so far and then then you need more and i can tell you you will need more um let's just take an area like that you can see definitely there's something there this is the area that we were fishing with martin de Kock in that video that i did if you look at that with the aerial hd there it is there you can see a lot more information the other thing to keep in mind now guys this is again one of those parts where our ex-president said to us listen properly and i tell you what everybody's gone wild with sas planets me too made all these amazing satellite imagery things do you know how far off some of those charts are most of them most of the satellite imagery and it's not sas planet's fault the that, that that software is just taking it from the cache and producing a chart out of it or uh, kml data 
uh, georeferenced uh, sort of data for the imagery. But the satellite imagery is is out. So often, like now, when I was at at Dricopies, I obviously had the satellite imagery with me, and I was driving up and down. I was looking for things, but the satellite imagery is off. It's way off. Let's go back to our satellite here. There's that's where it's showing where that reservoir is. Let's look at the where it actually is. Okay, in this case, in the Albert Falls case, it's close. It's 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 very very close, which is great. But don't trust it always. I've got some some dams that are up to 35 meters off. So watch out for that. Um, but guys, look at this detail here. I mean. There we go. There's a nice aerial view. You can see exactly what, what that is there. You can see it's old foundations there. there can you see these, these pylons here? There was obviously a jetty or something here before. I don't know what was here, here before. What you can always do, if you get a little bit confused with something like, like this, please don't forget about the sediment. Now you see, this is when my phone starts ringing. The guys press sediment and it goes white. Photo overlay, full, in a little. Okay, there we go. Look at all that information. Guys, the, the sediment chart for Albert Falls is very, very important. You will find things out in the middle of nowhere that you'll think, ah, man, absolute waste of time. But let me tell you, and I'm going to give you an example. Okay, everybody knows about this area. Where's this thing now? Okay, let's go to what every, everybody knows about this. We go back here, we go to back, we go to sediment, we go to aerial HD. There it is there. Um, where's that old rondable? You see, it's already been except T's and C's. Maybe we can see it there. Go back. Remember chart options, categories. Turn those, those categories off so you can see. Turn the photo overlay on to full. There it is. That's what everybody always talks about. Is that there? If we go to, geez, that's one of the very early photographs, eh? You see, there's my son Max standing by it. That's the rubble left behind from the old Ron Rondavo. But you want to know this type. Oh, there's a nice, okay. That's probably been moved. So, so, so definitely check it out. But this is what I was talking about. Let's go back. Do not forget about the sediment. These green areas are obviously where your plantations are. The red is where there's man-made structure. And guys, out of the blue, you'll find something just in the middle of nowhere. Oh, someone's going to give me a hard time for showing this. But anyway, you can't see the... <laughs> You can't see the the location of it, okay? Little things like that. How difficult was it to see that? Very, very hard to see. But look what happens here. Let's go to Mosaic. <clears throat> Let's go back. Go to back to our categories. Once you've done this once, you don't have to do it again unless you change the chart. Boom. It's an old trough. I wonder if we've got that in Ultra HF. That'll be interesting. Options full. No, we don't have it. That's a pity. It's a pity that we don't, eh? Um, okay. So keep swapping. I know a lot of the guys just everybody wants to use Ultra HF because it is so so clear. But give the other. You'll see there's less there's less coverage with the Ultra HF. But give the other, um, what do you call it, mosaics and what have you. Give them the chance. Give them the chance. I want to try, I want to show you the difference between. Guys, you've got to look so carefully <laughs> through these, these charts here. Because the information is incredible. But you've got to be flicking through the 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 different charts all the time 
Uh, James Parfit. Hello, James. Uh, John, the plus minus five tree standing on the spur wing drop off on five feet of water. Tom seems to think vertical height is plus minus 20 to 25 feet off. Okay, wow, there we go. James, thanks very much. Um, so uh, the five, plus minus five tree standing on the spur wing drop off on five foot of water. Phew, that's very shallow still to go and scan. But maybe we could, eh? Maybe it's still po still possible. So what he's saying is uh, the current level at 50% is 20 to 25 feet off. And that spurring area is in five feet of water. Hmm. Watch out for a little update. Okay. Maybe I should get in there and go and scan. Look, guys. Look, I might not. I might not. I've, I've got to leave a little bit. I mean, look, let's be honest. The diehard hummingbird guys that refuse to put fish tech charts on their boats and put a Lawrence unit on there to read the charts. Let's give them a little piece of something to, to go and scan so that they feel better. Let's, let's, let's leave it. If I do end up scanning anything, I don't want to leave it too late and get too close to nationals and cause a problem. So I think let's just stay away from that. No, we won't be doing an update on, on that area. We, we, we're we going to let the hummingbird guys go and do a little bit of, of scanning there. Remember guys, there's a lot of the hummingbird guys that have now bought Lawrence's uh, just for the charts side by side. Multi-brand users are are the sensible users right now what about garmin that last month show i was showing you the uh, garmin uh, panoptics live scope what an absolutely incredible device i mean um i saw videos now recently by russell marine products in tulsa oklahoma showing a comparison between lawrence's version of that mr paul it's the, the, the quality of the live site compared to the live scope, you, you no, you, you don't compare it. It, it cannot be compared. It, it's nowhere near. So let's, you know, let's rather not talk about that because I just get irritated when, when I think how the hype was built up and comp anyway, let's just leave it. The, if you want a live scope type technology, go and buy the Garmin, fits it on your boat. Just use it for the live scope. If you want the 360, it's a fantastic casting tool. It's not a structure finding tool. If you're using a 360 to look for structure, you're in trouble, a lot of trouble. But it's a casting tool and it's a good casting tool because you don't have to do anything. It's like a live radar around the boat. Your chart says to you, there's a hump coming up there with some something on it, a brush or a bit of timber. Your 360 will say there's a blurry thing approaching but it's exactly at that location. Make your cast that degree, that heading, that distance, bang, and you're on it on your first cast. So that's a great tool. Okay, the thing I don't like about the live scope is that you've physically got to manipulate it yourself. It's not something automatically scanning like a radar, like the 360. You've got to point it in the, di in the direction of the object. And when you're on spot block on your trolling motor, that's a problem because that transducer is attached to your trolling motor unless you put a separate pole to control it. But that's another story. But I think we're going to see a lot of interesting things happen there. But anyway, um, <clears throat> guys, what else can we do with the uh, Albert Falls chart? I said there's mosaic, there's ultra. Oh, yes, I just want to go through what this accept T's and C's is. Accept T's and C's is the very first work I did with the drone. This is when Albert Falls dropped for the first time. This is when the, when, when, when the drought hit us and these things got exposed. I didn't know how to do autonomous mapping with the drone back in those days. So I used to go out with umbrellas and pick umbrellas in the ground, use a handheld GPS, take the coordinates of those umbrellas, take a photograph with the drone and then calibrate it on the computer with with Google Earth and whatnot, it was a nightmare. But when I brought out Aerial HD, which is that, which is now using proper mapping, you know, where it scans and all, it goes and buzzes up and down and records the entire area. Um, things had changed by then. The, the A lot of things had changed. The, the grass had grown, uh, things had changed. 
And the guy said to me, what are you doing? Do not take this accept T's and C's off. So I've put accept T's and C's back on, onto this, this card. And you'll see it is very, very different to the mapping version. If you go Aerial HD, can you see how this is all? Look at that grass there. But if you look at accept T's and C's, there's your tires there. But look how, how there isn't that much vegetation. You can see I got my calibration a little bit off. So Aerial HD will be more. That's the center of it there. Uh, the accept T's and C's a little bit more. Is, is, so you're going to have to play around a little bit. Make no mistake. But you get the idea. But this is when the dam dropped for the first time like i said and there's good information here i think this is where we got yeah you know this is before all those bushes start to grow i know the guys put a lot of uh, trees in there they 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 did plant new new trees so yeah you, you're gonna have to do a little bit of homework guys in fact you're gonna have to do a lot of homework use all the charts go through every single one okay we've been through accept and c's we've been to the the ultra hf we've we've looked at that what's this with the pool here oh yes okay that does make sense eh? watch out for that type of thing those type of things will definitely be in in play um again like i said you've got your satellites you can use that as a as a basic reference but when you get you see these type of areas are going to be very key and you can see them they are there even if you go to the sediment you can see those key points um very valuable points um if you go to your aerial hd yeah you can see it as clear as day okay so take your time look at the photographs they they will help you um I, identify interesting things so yeah um right let's just see what michael cannon says i feel like i'm missing something important i wanted to talk about there's so much around the dam that we can talk about i've got to be careful uh when albert falls falls is going to be yeah um mark yeah 100 percent um you know when 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 the dam fills up I mean, can you imagine these these charts when when, when it's one hundred percent? I mean, it, it's going to be like like nothing you've ever seen before. I mean, look at Clan Bay, oh, man, that's going to be so fantastic. You look at these photographs here. Look at that, just amazing. And remember, keep in mind, you know, all the elevation. I mean, the um, mosaics that you see and the ultra HF and whatnot. Guys, we're going to do all of that all over again. Obviously, we'd have to wait for the vegetation to to die. It'll be way down the line. But uh, please remember, fish tech charts never, ever end. They are continually growing, improving. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a never ending uh, cycle of improvement. That's what fish tech is, is all about. And to the guys that have never bought a fish tech chart before, let me just explain to you how it works. If you buy a fish tech chart, let me just put this on. To, can we see the elevator? There we go. If you buy a fish tech chart and you use it for a couple of years, and then all of a sudden you find out, geez, there's all these massive um, uh, uh, updates to the chart. You don't have to go and buy the chart all over again. All you need is a is is a current um, subscription to fish tech a subscription costs you a thousand rand a year okay you don't have to take it out every year but when you do need that uh, update all you do is you buy a subscription whether you've got one chart or you own every chart of of our every single one of our charts in south africa and we will update all those charts for you free of charge or alternatively buy a new chart that you see hey hang on that's a new dam i like that dam buy that that comes with a 12 month subscription and then send your cards that need updates back and get your free upgrade on all your charts so there we go there's another cost saving tip for you i'm looking at the uh, facebook on my facebook jeez it is very blurry eh? anyway 
um, I can see I haven't forgotten to record this time, guys. So there will be a video on uh, YouTube. So so don't worry about that. Right, guys, what I want to do is I see the time is marching on very quickly. I'm going to go back to Navionics. So please um, do your homework. Spend your time with these uh, units, you know, with these charts and get the full benefit out of it. The charts I'm going to put in now is... <clears throat> I get a lot of people asking about um, Woodstock. Where can I find the Woodstock chart? Guys, the Woodstock chart is on the Midmar chart. You need to buy the Midmar chart to get the Woodstock chart. So you take your Midmar chart, you put your Midmar chart into the unit. <clears throat> Here's Midmar. So we should see that popping up. Yes, 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 yes. There's all the bits and pieces for Midmar. And the first thing you do is go to the satellite. There's your satellite. There's Midmar. It should also have a sediment. There's the sediment for, for Midmar. Go back to your satellite. Zoom out. And you'll see up there is Woodstock. Now, this is a low level. It's a great low, low level. Uh, there's some really good information here. There we go. There's no drone imagery here. There's no contour imagery for this. There's only two. There's satellite and there's sediment. But holy moly, guys, the sediment is good. Pay very, very close attention to the sediment chart on Woodstock Dam. There is fantastic information here. You, take your time, be patient, and look at it carefully. The purpley sort of bit, that's your main river channel. The red stuff, that's your uh, man-made objects. And then your green stuff is obviously timber. Uh, but look very, very carefully around the dam. You're going to have to work out what's in the water and what isn't in, in the water. So it's a little bit of, uh, of experiment. I'm going to put it on the really tip there, go back to the sediment. So that's, you know, when the, when the satellite was taken, that was sort of your water level there. So you can see a lot of stuff that is still in the water and is very interesting to fish and probably very dangerous for your boat as well so um we will i will get to woodstock i am going to get on woodstock i'd like to get onto it when it's as full as possible to get the contour data and then obviously when it drops get on there with the drone and try and get some of that information as well as the side scan data so yeah um please uh, the satellite and sediment for woodstock is great you really really need so need to spend some 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 time with that chart okay i'm not going to spend too much time on that i see we're already nearly quarter two so i'm going to take that one out that's our midmar so guys remember woodstock do your homework you don't need to have you seen the ox do this no no but don't don't do that that's a casting tool. This thing. This is a casting tool. It's not a structure. Okay. The chart that I've just put in now. Um, Armand Labiskakni says Spionkop. Armand, no. I don't have Spionkop. Um, but I could certainly... I could, I could certainly look into it. You know, do a, do a satellite for you. And uh, add it to the to to one of the charts. I'll I'll look into that. Maybe send me a message on Facebook, uh, just as a reminder. <clears throat> okay, this is the Northern Provinces chart that I've just put in here. Now uh, we're going to go back. We're going to go to chart options. Okay, there we go, guys. As you can see, there's lots of satellite imagery on this uh, chart. This is a very well priced chart. I think it's around. 2200 rand there's about 20 satellite dams on here and about 14 uh, sediments great great value fantastic value 
There's Arabi, if I'm not mistaken. We'll zoom into that. And there it is there. As you can see, this is a low-level Arabi. There's some really, really interesting stuff all over the place here. Now, <clears throat> yeah, no, this, okay, there you can see, you see all those rocks. I need to find out what the level of the dam is currently because the satellite of Arabi is very, very good. But don't take anything away um, from the sediment. You see how it looks a little bit offish there? Where's those rocks? Guys, do you, I, these are rocks. You see these like hashes? Well, they sort of three lines, three lines at 90 degrees to, to one another. Go back to the satellite. Bang, that's in the water, clearly. Okay, we know this is a rocky area because the satellite is, is there. So there's no, you know, just keep flick-flacking between uh, sediment and, and the satellites. This one hasn't been colored in, which is a pity. But try and look for those isolated rocky spots. And I'll tell you what. If you find them, you're going to find a gem of note. That's all rocky. That's all rocky. I'm looking for something that's in the water. I think it was down here somewhere. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to give you an example of what you can do here, you know. Um, let's go back to the satellite. I can't remember anymore. That might work. Okay, something like this. This is quite interesting. You can see on your satellite that there's uh, some rock there. But go to your sediment, bang, there. It tells you that there is rock there. You remember those little hashes, those little three lines at 90 degrees to, to one another? That means that there's uh, rocks there. But look what's interesting now and watch carefully. Bang, there's more rocks. If you go to your satellite, you can't see them. They aren't highlighted. So how many people are going to miss that unless they've driven around and actually scanned Arabi? I think Arabi will, will be quite an interesting scan. Uh, I am going to Arabi next. I will be doing Arabi Dam um, as a Fishtech HD chart. That's going to be interesting as, as well. But I think it's going to be quite a quick dam. I don't think that's going to take too long. But anyway, I've said that before and it's bitten me terribly. So, um, like I said, guys, concentrate on your, um, on your charts. Do not forget to flick between your satellite and your sediment on your sediment charts. There is good information. You just need to know how to read the actual uh, 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 charts um, right for once we are early we are at 7 seven forty eight, guys um, with regard to uh, you know what I'm going to take these next couple of minutes to talk about I just want to see if we've got I can't remember if I put three copies on this sediment no I, I didn't no I didn't do it, which is a pity. Let's just zoom in there. Yeah, we all know that's Arabi Dam. Yeah, no, I'll I'll get there and I'll I'll record this this dam, guys. Um, as some of you um, who follow me on Facebook and whatever you know that I've just got back from uh, Drikopi's Dam. Now. Guys have asked me for drink copies for many years, and a friend of mine, Henko, Henko Falun, he used to live in Nelspreit, I think it was, and he drove around that area and he did a little bit of recording and uh, he did a little bit of mapping. I think he focused predominantly on that sort of island area down in the southern part of the actual dam, and um, yeah, we, we, we sold that contour data many, many years ago, but it was incomplete. There was another chart that was doing the rounds. Um, there was some contour data floating around. It didn't have actual depth values to it, but um, 
it, it was contours, but you didn't know what the depths were, very much like a sediment chart. Um, I've compared it to the actual recording that I've collected myself, and yes, it's it's good. Um, those those were relatively accurate. But guys, it's those little things. You know, I, I want to highlight this again. When you're studying a chart, I'm talking about the contour chart. Okay, I've taken a contour out, otherwise I'd put it up and I'd show you. Always know where your deep water is and where your shallow water is when you're looking at a chart. And whichever way the contour veers off, it's either going to show you that it's in a dip or it's on a rise. Play, pay very, very close attention to those little details on the contour chart. I know the guys are spoiled for choice with the Fishtech HD charts. There's drone imagery, there's side scan mosaics, there's ultra HF, there's all these amazing things. But sometimes you still need to go back to basics and study those contours because it's those little subtle uh, points and ledges that will make a difference to your, your fishing. So pay very close attention to that. What we did, um, something very exciting that we did at, or what I did at Dricopis, it was the very first dam where a large section, in fact, um, the total trail of one single recording, you'll see something I put on Facebook earlier this, uh, was it on the weekend? Yeah, I think it was over the weekend or was it yesterday? I can't remember. Um, I think it did an 86 kilometer trail, a section of the dam. But guys, we've been using, uh, I've been using autonomous craft to record depth data since way back. I think the first dam was Rigglesweight that I used autonomous craft to actually record. And that was a while ago. And everyone's saying, why are you making such a big scene of this autonomous recording now, guys? It's for the first time I've been able to record side scan. And let me tell you, that craft is called Amy. It's a trimaran type design with a two and a half horsepower four stroke motor on, on the back. It used 5.7 liters for 80 something kilometers. She ran for six hours unattended. I was 10, 12 kilometers away. I was right down, uh, down the Swaziland side of the dam, busy recording. And this craft is uh, fondly named Amy for artificial intelligence mapping. And um, she just did a absolutely phenomenal job. I could monitor her progress on my phone through a tracking device. Um, that I, I got from uh, Johan Copenhagen. Speak to him if you're looking for a tracking device for your car, your bike, your boat, your whatever. It's a fantastic uh, tool and um, I can track uh, how, how she's progressing on her job. But guys, when I look at the quality of the side scan and that day when she was doing that recording, it was the wind was blowing. It was windy. It was choppy. Um, I looked at that area and I thought, I'm not going to side scan that area. For now, I'll put Amy in there. I might not even use that data because it will be, it might be useless. But I'll just put her in there, see what it looks like. And guess what? It's going on the chart. I drove it that same path when it was flat, calm. And I tell you what, that Amy's work is better. There's a place for artificial intelligence in mapping. Let me tell you, AI is the way forward for mapping and this is going to happen around the world there's going to come a time where there's going to be these little amy's running around the world recording data and building the most amazing mosaics the world has ever seen because as a human being you just cannot drive that well for that long so it's going to be a fantastic chart. Um, I'll be talking about, it's a little bit early, but I'm going to cut off. Um, guys, I'm going, let me just see if there's any messages. Uh, Henny Skuman, hello Henny, how are you doing? Uh, good evening. Um, Michael Cannon says, Amy looks incredible. How does Amy work around standing timber? <laughs> um, Michael, look, standing timber, I have to create safety zones. So I can't just get on day one and put Amy in the water and say, go and do that. You need somebody to get on the water and go and record a safety perimeter of the area that needs to be scanned, let's say the following day, and mark all the danger points, like uh, things that it can run into, boys, uh, moored boats, uh, things like that. Look, moving boats, um, 
obviously this is not something you want to do in the holidays or on the weekend or whatnot. You want to do this in the quietest possible time where there's a few boats on, on, on the water. I'm pretty sure that with time legislation will come in as to how that's going to be controlled and how people are going to be made aware when there is a survey going on and, and how to behave because you know as humans uh, common sense is a very very rare thing we have to be taught how to do things like like that but uh, let me tell you the the quality of the standing timber and all that on this on that ultra hf is just unbelievable it's really a fantastic chart so the guys that are fishing the super final or whatever it is and remember that's only one tournament guys they, people are going to be fishing uh, uh, Jacobi's Dam for many, many years to come. And they are going to get the full benefit of that chart. They are, there's stuff on that chart that is just amazing. Bartas Janssen van Rensburg. Good evening, Bartas. How are you doing? Um, right. So, guys, let's wrap it up there. It's a little bit early. It's only a couple of minutes. I've rambled on a little bit. Well, I always ramble on. But, um, guys, uh, like I said, Next month, um, we in June, we will be talking about the Dricopis chart in detail. The, in fact, the whole show will be dedicated to the Dricopis chart. We will talk about it in detail. Um, and those who want to order, please order now. Contact Colleen, sales at fishtech.co.za or uh, give us a buzz. I'll put a thing up on Facebook in the comments here on uh, how to contact Colleen and place your order on that chart and as well as your Albert Falls chart as well as your Midmar chart as well as your Northern Provinces chart so remember it's 3,400 Rand per chart uh, except for the Northern Provinces chart which is 2,200 which is the sediment chart it's a great value for money um, so yeah uh, Dirk yeah good evening and uh, thanks no pleasure and thanks for actually joining us guys Thank you very much for spending this time with me once again. I will see you next month, the second Tuesday of the month at the same time, uh, 7 to 8 o'clock. Thanks for watching, guys. Tight lines.